Rachel. In this video, I have lots of Thanksgiving cooking to share with you, so let's get started. The weekend before Thanksgiving, I made our desserts and put them in the freezer. The first one that I'm showing you is peanut butter pie. I'm making two pies, so I am using two blocks of cream cheese and a cup and a half of powdered sugar as well as a cup of creamy peanut butter and I'm just going to use my hand mixer and mix this all together. It would maybe be easier to start by hand and get the cream cheese and the peanut butter um, cream together and then maybe use the mixer. I'm not sure. I've done it both ways and either way it is kind of a mess but it is worth it in the end. So I put in a container of uh, whipped cream. Actually, I used two for this because I'm doing two pies. So if you were doing one, you would just use one container of whipped topping. And then I'm just dividing the mixture into these graham cracker crusts. So easy, but so delicious. And people think that it's so fancy and special. So you can drizzle chocolate in the bottom of your shell before you put your filling in if you would like to but this pie is seriously so rich that this time I opted to skip that part and just top it with some chocolate chips but you could also drizzle the top with chocolate you could use an oreo pie crust for this I've made this pie so many different ways I couldn't even tell you and it's always a crowd pleaser Once these pies are assembled, just put the lids on and then chill them in the fridge or in our case, they're going in the freezer until Thanksgiving Day. And then I'll just take them out and let them sit in room temperature to thaw until we're ready to serve. The next dessert that I'm sharing is a cranberry fluff salad, you know, the kind that you make with Jello. To start off, I'm putting a can of sweetened condensed milk into a glass dish, and then I'm going to add a big can of crushed pineapple that has been drained and just mix that all together. Next, I'm adding about a tablespoon of lemon juice and then I'm adding a can of cranberry sauce and the original recipe is from Taste of Home. I've been making this for decades and normally I use a can of whole berry cranberry sauce and not this jelly stuff, but this is what I eat on hand. So this is what I use and I recommend using the whole berry cranberry sauce. And then I added a package of Jello mix. The strawberry flavored one is what I use this time. It gives it a really nice red flavor and it kind of tones down that cranberry sauce which can be pretty tart. And then next I'm adding a whole container of whipped topping. And then I just blend that all in until it's thoroughly mixed and none of the white is showing. And then I'm adding a, about a cup of mini marshmallows and then I am adding chopped nuts to this also, which are optional for this recipe. And I do recommend that if you're serving this for small kids, usually this is a dessert that goes over really well with the young kids, but they don't tend to like the nuts as well. And so that's something to keep in mind. On Thanksgiving morning, I was up early getting the meat started. We're having a ham, which I got from Sam's Club. It's the Members Mark brand, and I really do like their glaze packet that comes with their hams. And I'm just putting that in the crock pot. It's kind of cut up so that it would fit, and then I just poured that glaze right on top. It will make its own juices in the crock pot, and that will all blend in and be so delicious. And to get these turkeys ready, I have my mix of garlic powder and garlic 
I mean onion powder and garlic powder in my little bowl. I added some poultry seasoning and then I added some lemon pepper to it and I just give it a stir and I actually ended up using this mix on a lot of stuff this day <laughs> so not just the turkey and I really like this seasoning blend for chicken or turkey it's nothing special I didn't do anything really significant with these turkeys to get them ready this day except get them cleaned up and put them in my big roasting pan I did cook these in an electric roaster to make room in my oven just giving them a little massage and they are ready all I did was baste them every now and then throughout the day and they were good to go I was showing you my bacon and I had to go with the bacon here is a little dressed up piggy and next I am getting some cornbread ready for cornbread dressing and so here is how I do it to save dishes and just to cut a corner and because I know I'm not serving up this cornbread I am making it in this big pan and I'm doing it according to the directions on the box I'm just using some Jiffy Mix for this and this is a big pan and so this cornbread is going to cook up really dry and like you would not want to eat this on its own but since it's going to get crumpled up it's exactly how i want it to be i'm chopping up my onions and getting some beef chicken broth ready to go for the brussels sprouts while that cornbread is in the oven and i have another pan out and since i only had a small amount of the chicken base in my jar i just added some water and get, gave it a good shake and then poured it into the pan and these are frozen brussels sprouts and i'm topping that with some onions this is going to have a nice chicken flavored liquid to bathe in while it's in the oven and I'm just putting some of those hot strips of bacon right on top to cool off until I'm ready to come back and break it up with my fingers. I'm also adding some dried cranberries to this and this is my first time making this. I saw a picture of it online probably on Pinterest and decided that I had these items on hand so I was going to give it a shot. My husband loves Brussels sprouts but to be honest he didn't care for the cranberries which is a little ironic because I really liked it. <laughs> so um, anyway it was a really good dish. I topped it with some parmesan cheese and just put it in the oven and here I am just getting um, some beef broth in a big mason jar because I am all out of chicken stock. I don't know what I was thinking before Thanksgiving, but I didn't do a whole lot of shopping, so I'm kind of just winging it on this day. And the lid from the Better Than Bouillon base just happened to fit my mason jar. And I'm going to give um, these dishes a quick wash up. I kind of like to clean as I go when I'm doing a big holiday cooking like this. I have a big pan of sausage cooking up as well as my elbow macaroni for the macaroni and cheese which I am going to show you how I put my macaroni and cheese together. And to start I am putting some butter in the bottom of this roasting pan. This is one of the big like turkey size roasters and this is actually margarine. I will probably call it butter all through the video because that's what I am used to working with but like I said I didn't shop correctly so I didn't buy butter and I had some margarine um, in the trunk of my car <laughs> long story so that got brought in and we used it for this day which is fine I grew up eating margarine and as my grandparents called it oleo was always on their table but I do prefer butter that's just a personal thing I like butter and so anyway I put my hot cooked noodles in with the butter and mixed it all up and now I'm adding some seasoning salt and some pepper and maybe I spilled the pepper or maybe I added lots of pepper who knows I do but I'm not telling <laughs> anyway I'm just getting my seasonings and my um, noodles and the butter all mixed together then I'm going to add a block and a half of cream cheese I always add cream cheese to my macaroni and cheese because it just gives it a really creamy texture and I had a half a block left over from making pies and whatnot so I added though that extra bit as well 
Next, I'm opening up this block of Velveeta, and this is just also another um, cheese that gives it a really creamy texture, and this Velveeta is a little bit salty to me, so I kind of watch what I'm adding to my mac and cheese as far as salt, because you will get that um, saltiness from this cheese. And this black of Velveeta had a lot of air bubbles and pockets in it, but I'm just chunking it up into smaller cubes so that it will melt down in the oven and I get it stirred in. I'm going to just pop this mac and cheese into the oven after I get the milk added. I use a whole container of half and half. You can barely see it and I'm not sure where the footage went, but I always say to mix it like you would a bowl of cereal. That's the amount of milk that you want to your noodles and it goes into the oven. While it's in the oven, I'm going to fast forward a little and start working on my dressing and I was showing you my ingredients are set up and I am taking this cornbread the Jiffy cornbread mix and just crumbling it up like I said you would not want to serve this cornbread to anybody it's super thin and it's super dried out which is what you want for dressing and if I was making cornbread ahead of time I would set it out possibly overnight so that it could dry out and be perfect for dressing but since this cooks up in such a nice thin layer it is already pretty dry and to that I am adding these boxes of um, stuffing that I got from Aldi. So it's kind of like the off brand of stovetop. And I'm just mixing those in. I start off with, I think, three or four boxes of it. And then I come back in with another one because you really want it to be up to the edge because you're going to add so much liquid to it that it's going to shrink up quite a bit. And so I'm adding that beef broth and normally my recipe I use um, chicken stock, not beef, but like I said, I'm out of a lot of stuff. So the beef worked just fine and I didn't show it, but I actually used two quarts of beef broth to get this dressing as wet as it needed to be. And so next I am adding all the cans of cream of celery and cream of mushroom soup. I used about five cans all together and you can mix these up any way you want to and use any flavor of soups. I use the cream of celery so that I can get that celery taste in there. And once you get it all mixed up, you will want it to be kind of like a thick oatmeal consistency. It will be very wet and soupy but that's okay because it cooks in the oven and it all comes together and I add some onions to it and normally I would add cooked celery too but the celery looked really bad at the store and it was really expensive like over two dollars and I just could not bring myself to spend that kind of money for something that was brown and limp so next I'm adding some of that cooked sausage to this dressing and I don't normally have a meat you could you can add whatever you want. My family just likes it with the sausage. You can make it with chicken. And I know people that do. I have shared this recipe with many of my friends and actually got it from a friend probably 20 years ago. But I have put so many different spins on it that it is my recipe now. I usually add boiled egg to this too, but I just wasn't feeling it on this day. And so I'm just going to cover that up with some foil and we're going to pop it in the oven. And we are just playing oven Tetris on this day. So everything gets mixed around and turned and rotated on the shelves. So the mac and cheese has been in there for about a half hour while I was assembling that dressing and I get it out and it's warmed up and it's beginning to melt. But I want to give it a mix just to make sure that the cheeses are all getting mixed in and it goes back in the oven. And next I'm going to start putting together this green bean casserole. So I used about six cans of the French style green beans drained and I'm adding some onion to this. I'm not a real big fan of green bean casserole and I think people get pretty sick of it on Thanksgiving. So I'm using an Amish recipe that came out of the Amish Christmas cookbook. I will share some more information on that in the description box. And this version 
is mine. They use regular chopped up potatoes in their recipe, but I switched it out for hash browns on this day. I just happened to look in my freezer as I was getting ingredients around and I had a bag of hash browns and I thought that'll work. You know, sometimes I make a hash brown casserole on the holidays and a green bean casserole as well. So here's the best of both worlds. In the Amish cookbook, they added sausage and potatoes and cheese and the cream cheese or the cream cheese, not cream cheese, cream of mushroom soup to their recipe. So I just mix that all together and I added a couple of different kinds of cheeses. I have mozzarella and sharp cheddar cheese. I usually have those in my house and I'm very limited on cheese on Thanksgiving. Like I do not know what I did to myself this year. I had no butter. I had um, no rolls and um, pretty much no cheese. So anyway, we made it work and it was delicious. This is a really good recipe. It could be a meal on its own. And I just get that all ready with some extra cheese on top because I'm extra like that and give it a um, foil topping and it's going to go into the rotation with the other huge roasting dishes of side dishes that I have. Oh yeah, and I also topped it off with some french fried onions which were not in the original recipe and with the sausage and everything, I probably should have waited and put those on last, but I was not really doing a whole lot of detail work that day. I was just putting things in the oven and giving them a spin every now and then. And so I'm checking on the twins here in the dining room. I have a table set up with a roasting pan and the turkeys are in there. They've been in there for about a hour or 45 minutes somewhere around there and so I realized I probably should add some liquid and that's what I was doing and so after another good amount of time I just started the basting process with these turkeys and I'm just basting them every time I pass by them which was quite often because they were right in our dining room and so I'm Actually, here is the little setup that I had and Buddy's hanging out because, of course, he can smell that turkey cooking. And here's my little buffet in the dining room where I have our dessert set up and this candle says talk turkey to me. I got that at the Target dollar spot and I can finally burn it. So here are those peanut butter pies and the pecan pie and pumpkin pie as well as that strawberry or the cranberry fluff dessert and those are just coming um, to room temperature they were frozen so I'm letting them thaw out and they are just gonna sit there until the rest of the food is done cooking and we are ready to eat them up I picked up these cute little Thanksgiving dessert and dinner plates from the Dollar General. Our dogs did really well. They were just kind of hanging out around the turkey. Of course, who could blame them? All these turkey smells in the house and they did really well about not bumping or getting into things, but they were kind of hunkered up underneath the table for most of the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, he's looking like he might be in trouble, which he wasn't, but... <laughs> They're just circling like, oh, somebody's going to drop something anytime now. <laughs> of course, the ham was done pretty quickly in the crock pot. But the turkeys seemed to take forever, which was fine because we ate a little bit earlier in the day this year. And we started off with ham and all the fixins. And then later for our later dinner time meal, we had turkey and whatnot. And it all worked out just fine. There was plenty of ham and everybody was more excited about the ham than the turkey this year, I have to say.
I saved the dreaded task of peeling potatoes till the very end on Thanksgiving, which my original plan was to get it all done before the day and have it in the freezer, but that didn't happen because of work and life. So here I am just cutting up these sweet potatoes into bite-sized pieces. We are making the very sugary marshmallowy yams and when I was doing something else, Grant took over for me, which I was very grateful for because sweet potatoes are very hard to chop up. They are a really hard vegetable or whatever they are. Are they a fruit? Are they a vegetable or what? I don't know. Anyway, Grant is getting these chopped up and he was really nice enough to let me record. He added a half a cup of brown sugar and then he's putting just enough liquid in there to help that brown sugar form a nice syrup while they're baking and then topping with some mini marshmallows. We realized a little bit late that we forgot to add cinnamon, so that is not going to get sprinkled onto the end. But after the um, marshmallow layer, he's going to add some nuts to that. And then we are going to pop them into the air fryer because at this point, Oven Tetris is turning into oven Jenga and we don't want to put things on top of each other like that. So we just cooked these because they were in a smaller pan in my air fryer and it worked out just fine. I put it on the bake setting on 400 and they ended up cooking for about 40 minutes at that temperature. They, um, Probably didn't need to go that long, but I was going by look and not feel. So make sure that you give them a poke because they could have probably cooked a lot faster than 40 minutes. But this was another successful dish and I'm so thankful that I had my air fryer, my instant pot, my crock pots, and my turkey roasters because my oven was working hard this day. And this is just Grant and I doing a little bit of adjusting and this is the green bean casserole and I'm just going to give it a stir and like I said I probably should have waited to put the onions on it but I was just kind of moving things around every 30 minutes because my oven is very um, unreliable it cooks in different it cooks like what's the word uneven it cooks uneven so you have to move things from left to right and from top to bottom and it is what it is it all worked out the food came out delicious so it did its job and I am happy with it now I'm going in to check on that dressing like I said you can move things around and heat them for an hour or so and with these big pans it takes way longer than an hour to get everything cooked but you got to dig in and see how it's cooking in the middle and that's what I'm doing here it looks delicious and now I'm going to cook it with the foil off just to get the middle dried out a little bit more and that's kind of what you want with your dressing it will be super moist but you want it to get cooked all the way through and here is how the brussels sprouts is looking and i really really like this i might have to make it again when even when it's not a holiday and so that noise indicates that it is tater time and so i am just gonna beat up my potatoes with the electric hand mixer i do not own a stand mixer because obviously i have a small kitchen and not a lot of space and i don't know if I would necessarily use a stand mixer that often so my hand mixer is what I use for everything and so I'm going to put in a very very large spoonful of this margarine because for this amount of potatoes I would probably use a whole stick of butter <clears throat> and I'm just adding some milk and that is all these potatoes need is buttermilk and salt and pepper. I kind of feel like at the end of the day, mashed potatoes are still my favorite side dish at Thanksgiving. 
we kind of talked about that all day what was our favorite and here is how those side dishes turned out the green bean casserole delicious the uh, brussels sprouts with cranberries and bacon also very good the mac and cheese i got a lot of praise on this macaroni and cheese and then the dressing the mashed potatoes the gravy, which is just brown gravy, and we won't talk about what happened with the gravy, <laughs> but the yams were still cooking at that time, but they were good too. The guy said this was their happy dance. They're so happy it's time to eat, and here is a finished plate. Of course, we got the extra large Thanksgiving dinner plates because you can pile so much more food up on them, and it only comes around once a year. After dinner, it was pie time and football time, and we had a good laugh about Grant covering his entire piece of pumpkin pie with whipped cream, and here is Dawson's regular, and we had a lot of fun with the family that was able to come and spend the day with us and have dinner at our house, and uh, the yams did finally make their appearance on the buffet, and that is all we have for our Thanksgiving dinner. Thank you so much for coming by and watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and we have plenty of leftovers so we will not have to do so much cooking for the rest of the week. I hope that you all had a happy Thanksgiving and I thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video. If you enjoyed it and you would like to see more of my future videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I share new videos at least once a week sharing what my family has for dinner and would love to add you to my YouTube family. That's all for now. See you in the next one.